All right, our next comedian, our first comedian, rather, is a regular around here. We love him. Give it up for the one and only Jeff Simon! That's the way I keep it going for Scotty. That's enough, it's enough, dude. I can't one good fucking joke. That's it. But he's one of your top divorce lawyers in uh, Manhattan. I use him for all my divorces. He gives me like a 10% discount. Uh, how's everybody doing tonight? Good. I, I just joined this new day, uh, dating website for old people. Uh, desperate, please somebody fuck me dot com. Uh, I, had, I had a day with this woman who lied about her age. She was supposed to be uh, 50. She was in her 80s. Uh, I couldn't get her wheelchair on my car. Uh, it was one of these old style chairs that don't fold up. Uh, she gave me one of the worst blowjobs I've ever had in my life. First she tried to uh, blow my phone. Then she thought my thumb was my dick. Uh, she wanted to know if I was going to take her out again. Uh, I said, oh, okay, but I'll be wearing gloves next time. And we're going to have to take accessor ride. And then this other lady on Please Somebody Fuck Me uh, emailed me. I clicked on her profile. Her body type is uh, Turn Off the Lights. Um, she, she never touches a drop of alcohol, which means she gets drunk every night. And she just got off heroin. Uh, I'm eating her for lunch on Saturday. I, I can't like to this chick, you know? Uh, well, I used to care about with tits and asses. Now I get turned on by how much property a woman owns. Uh, the, the best time to meet a woman is when her husband dies. That's why I like to be in the ICU when I pull a plug on a guy's respirator. Um, I noticed I this lady, she just had a lot of plastic surgery. She has like a 30-year-old face, 18-year-old ass, and, but she has these 80-year-old hands and refuses to wear gloves. That's why I won't take her out. And it brings back memories when I was five years old. Uh, my grandmother used to give me a hand job every night before I went to bed. It's pretty bad. Uh, but I, I hate women that have a lot of baggage. M emotional baggage is the worst. That's when they carry over all the, uh, the negativity and the bitterness from all their past relationships and from, from their dysfunctional childhoods. You know? I, can't go out, I can't be with a woman that's as fucked up as I am. You know? Uh, but I, I had a real dysfunctional childhood. Like, uh, my father didn't like me, you know. He never played catch. And he only said three things to me. He said, shut, shut the fuck up, you're not getting any money, and take out the garbage. That's why I'm fucked up today, you know. Uh, but uh, I, I'd like to get a trophy wife, I really do, you know. Uh, everybody says it's narcissistic to want a trophy wife, you know. And then it's also... And the woman's a gold digger, you know? These people are just jealous cock blockers, you know? That's all they are. Cock blockers. You know, I know this woman, she's 35. Uh, she has the most incredible ass I've ever seen in my life. All she wants is a million dollar line of credit and a weekly allowance. What's wrong with wanting some financial security if you're a woman, right? A little financial security, right? But, uh, I, I hope this comedy thing works out because I hate being a pharmacist at Rite Aid. It's, it, it's living hell. I hate when all these uh, nasty old Jewish ladies with no teeth ask me to recommend something for that itch. And uh, I hate when these, every gay guy in Manhattan comes into Rite Aid. You know, when we have this sale on bounty paper towels, 15 rolls for $7.99. You know? You know, the gay guys. And, and I hate when these, uh, these, these, these 12 year old girls send their mommies in to fill their birth control pills, you know? That, that gets me pissed off. And that's not even, you know. But uh, the only way I get to a 12 hour shift at Rite Aid is to get stoned on Xanax. I have to get, you know, uh, completely numb and just be barely awake. And, uh, just be barely awake. And, uh, I, I've been on a I've been on a drug for like a month. I haven't uh, haven't said motherfucker once. Uh, I haven't had one customer complain. And you know the only problem is that I uh, I'm starting to get side effects. I'm slurring my speech. I don't know if you notice. Have trouble walking, and my short term memory is like gone. Like if I jerk off, 20 minutes later I can't remember if I jerked off. Ah. 
a fucking problem. But, uh, uh, you know, I'm trying to pretend to be this medical professional, you know? You know, pretending, when, when I got to stand at the counter all day, uh, ringing up peanut butter and Snicker bars with somebody's cancer pills. You know, and you, you get to wear this doctor's jacket, but then, uh, doctors, nobody treats you like a doctor. <laughs> you know, the only medical equipment they have in there is this check your own blood pressure machine. I hate when these customers ask me to, uh, you know, comment on their blood pressure reading. Like this old guy uh, asked me the other day, is 300 over 280 really bad? <laughs> I said, you gotta be fucking kidding me. Uh, I have a better chance of fucking Heidi Klum than you have of being alive at this time tomorrow. <laughs> I'll tell you, man, technically we're, we're, we're drug dealers, but we don't get the benefits of real drug dealers. You know, real drug dealers uh, drive Lamborghinis and Mercedes, and they give, give out pills to young women who show them their titties. I mean, right a drug dealers, uh, you know, they drive, we drive like used Toyotas. The only time I get to see someone's titties is when some old lady lifts up her shirt. And, uh... Right, in, you know, real drug dealers, they get respect, they get, they get record deals, they get to bank supermodels. I'm a drug dealer, you know what I get? You know, I get, I get these uh, old ladies and gay dudes asking me stupid questions about their butts. <laughs> and you know what I get? I, I get to sit in a Snickers aisle, pretending, as wearing a stupid jacket, pr pretending to be this medical professional. Uh, I can't get a woman under 50 to show me her tits. <laughs> But uh, these drugs we give out are total bullshit, you know? They're total bullshit, you know? Half of them are bad for you. You've seen these commercials. You know, right? The side effects, they fuck up your livers. They destroy your stomach linings. You know, you've seen these commercials. You people are killing yourself, you know? Because you're afraid to have, like, uh, anxiety. Right? Or a mood swing? Or be shy at a party? People, uh, you know, people, you know, you people gotta stop masking your, masking these side, masking these symptoms, masking your feelings. Get a fucking personality. <laughs> what you people gotta do is get a fucking personality. But uh, I tell you, the pharmaceutical situation in this country is really bad. You know, these commercials are hilarious. Well, the only way they get these people to, to want to take these drugs is by distracting you. You know, distract you. Say, oh. Oh look 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 at her, she's beautiful. And she's he and she's healthy. And look at him, he's fifty, he looks forty, he's running with his shirt off. Oh, the side effects are cancer, diabetes, <laughs> sudden death. Oh but look at him, he's run he he's running with his shirt off and he's so healthy. And there's a guy driving a truck. Yeah, I'm driving my truck, you know? <laughs> I'm fucking believable. <laughs> All right, Scotty, how much time do I got left? Uh, one minute. Uh, yeah, uh, I'll tell you, man, we're, we're right in is, uh, I hate when these people come in and, uh, like this, this, lady, this lady comes in and uh, with, a, with a Ziploc bag filled with white powder, and she wants to know what it is. I, I put some on my tongue. I, I told her it was sweet and low. I offered her $400 for it. <laughs> she wouldn't take it. I said, come back tomorrow, I'll give you 800 I get paid. <laughs> These woman deals are worse than men deals, I swear to God. And then uh, people are always coming in to like, uh, identify pills, you know? Like this lady comes in, she, she brings in these two pills she found in her son's jacket pocket. She wanted to know, I told, they were oxycodone. They were oxycodone. I mean, why have kids if your nine-year-old is going to be a drug addict, you know? Why have kids, you know? Like, well, my kids didn't get addicted to pain kills until they were 13 or 14, you know? <laughs> I, I, I always told my kids, if you ever get, uh, you know, if you ever, get, if you ever, you know, buy drugs on the street, let me match the price. <laughs> so, yeah, that's the advice I give to my kids. I swear to God. But then I tell you, I, people always, these people, I hate when these, the, the, the most frequent question I get is, uh, can I have a glass of wine with dinner? You know, people call up and, and they say, what are you taping? And they go, Ambien, Vicodin, uh, Oxycodone. I mean, I said, uh, I, I can't believe you're taking all this shit. You need, a, you need a glass of wine with dinner? <laughs> you're better off with heroin, you know? <laughs> the fuck, you know, unbelievable. All right, I'm going to give you back to the great sky. Yeah. Yeah. All right.
keep it going. Come on, guys, let's go to the next one.